Now I have shown this literally probably a thousand times. And this is nothing more than red pulsed laser. And it is now being accelerated because of a venturi that's down here, which means it sucks it through and accelerates it. It is accelerating it to a, a, such a degree that the actual particle is being pulled from the wave. That's not normally what these look like. Normally they look like this. All right, just like that. Right? But there is particles right here. But those particles are nothing more than they, they control huge regions around them. So as they come through, all of the stuff around it has to concuss and get out of the way. But once we put it to the venturi, it, it just sucked the particles right out of the wave. And then they exploded. Now, that's what light is. Light is particles. Right? And they're coming from the sun. They hit things. They warm things up. They give you sunburn. They do all those things. So let's get past that. I'm saying they're particles. No. And I can so show you why I, I'm making that statement. Now this should leave absolutely no doubt of what's going on. This is a solar eclipse. That's the moon. And that is what's flowing out from our sun in particles. Right? Now, that's, the sun isn't the only thing that's spinning around and spewing out all that. Every other luminous body in the galaxy is doing the same thing. We are scrubbing through these particles, and primarily they're electrons. Right, and the sun's scrubbing through them too. That's why it has that interaction. So it's time to look at this for what I'm presenting and just tell me, am I right? Am I wrong? Okay, here's the question I want to ask NASA. The sun is similar to the earth. It's a round body spinning through the same solar system that we're spinning through the same particles if there were some out there in this vacuum, which I say it's not a vacuum, but let's discuss that later. Our earth spins through whatever it's spinning through, being ripped around the solar system through the galaxy and our magnetosphere outside, which is, uh, I think it's 11 miles off of the surface of our Earth, is 56,000 degrees. And on our Earth, it's 80 or 90 degrees in that area. So it's 56,000 out here and 80 or 90 here. Why? I say it's because it's scrubbing through the particles that are emitted from every luminous body, not just our sun. So everything that we are ripping through, scrubbing through, spinning through, all of that stuff interacting with is, is com concussing, just like I showed you with the light. It concusses and it glows and it heats and it gives off electrons. And when it does that, the electrons ab we get ab are absorbed. Now, let's see what they say about the sun's corona, because it's the exact same situation. The sun is spinning. The surface is 6,000 degrees. It's spinning like this going through the solar system being ripped through the arms and all that stuff and it has a corona which is around it of millions of degrees so out here it's millions well let's take a look at it and let's see what they have to say about it. sun's corona is the outermost part of the sun's atmosphere it really is all it boils down to you never see it until you can eclipse the sun and then you can see these huge radiations that are shooting out from it i have some super shots now, it comes down here, it says, why is the corona so dim? Well, they talk about that, and they say that the corona reaches extremely high temperatures. However, the corona is very dim. Why? The corona is about 10 million times less dense than the sun's surface. All right. That's their reasoning. Now, why is the corona so hot? Here's my place. This is where I come in. I say, again, because it's scrubbing as it's spinning and ripping through the galaxy, it's scrubbing with the debris and the electrons that it is interacting with, and that creates not only the heat of millions of degrees out here, when it's only 6,000 down here, <laughs> not only that, it's electron against electron in extremeness, and you get your magnetic loops and all these little magnetic anomalies and so forth. All right, I have other stuff to say about the sun. I'm going to leave it for another time because I have more research on this that points to uh, not a, a mass of goo and, and uh, plasma and fusion and all that business. It's, I, I feel it's quite different, but well, that's a whole different st subject. I want to know, is my assessment of why the corona hot correct? 
is it right or is it wrong? I mean, that's because I can see it happen on every single uh, planet. <laughs> it just happens because it's this way. All right, it's time to address these things that I'm presenting and not run away from them. I mean, it is your jobs. All right, if, you, if you're going to profess that you know all the stuff and then you say, oh, well, this is a mystery, you don't even know how gravity works. And I see today that, oh, we're going to have a multi universe through some wormholes. I know how gravity works. It's extremely simple. And it is also related to the particles that are in space. I might as well do this now. All right, here's your gravity. The Earth spins like this. Not only does it spin like that, it's also being ripped around the solar system and it's being pulled through the galaxy. Tons of concussion against the atmosphere that is only out here, 11 miles out. All right, the Earth is 25, uh, it's uh, 8,000 miles in, in uh, diameter, 25,000 miles in circumference. Now, 11 miles is just like out here. Not even. And, and that's 56,000 degrees. And that's where the magnetic field sets up. And it's doing the same thing the sun is doing. Now, what about gravity, Roger? Well, gravity is nothing more than this thing here is nothing more than the a generator. Electrons out here concussing with these electrons here sets up the magnetic field, goes up from the south to the north, wraps around, comes back down. And guess what happens in the inside here? They also are pulling electrons in to come up to the top of the earth and come around. They're still all being pulled in as this thing spins, electron to electron. Alright, now that's gravity. It's the pull of electrons. Right? The more electrons, the harder it pulls to the Earth. The less electrons, the less it pulls. If it's if it's lightning or static or or um, or electricity, it goes right to ground instantly and very violently, because there are nothing more than electrons that are in that package. If you had lithium and or gold lithium doesn't have a ton of electrons it sort of drops slightly to the earth because the package contains a certain number of electrons which are not heavy for the amount of the package gold lead a lot of electrons in the size of the package bam all right hydrogen and helium they don't hardly have any electrons Zip, they go up in the air and they drift up into the atmosphere because they don't have enough electrons to get dragged to Earth. It's the S orbital doesn't come down to Earth. Above the S orbital, when you get into the P orbitals and up, they come down to Earth. And the heavier they are in the size of the package, the harder they hit the Earth. Gravity solved. All right? I'd like to have these things answered. Am I right? Am I wrong? Nobody knows how even gravity works. We don't know how these things heat up. They just happen to heat up out here. Nobody knows. I mean, first of all, let's just finish off with the, the Earth. I mean, it's so obvious. The bow shock crashes, forms the outermost layer of the magnetosphere. The boundary between the magnetosphere and the ambient medium, which is out here, which is all the ether. They used to call it ether. It's, it's particles in space. They're just not concussing with each other until they hit something that crashes into them. Now, it, but anyway, that's the magneto sheath, the magneto pause, they come up with all these things. All it is is particles being crushed into our moving forward earth. 